Tea now and the Fiordla National Park were amazing, but now we're heading to our next stop, Dunedin. It's a little windy out there. last night and just had dinner and passed out so this morning we're gonna go check out the town because it looks really really nice before heading back north towards Tekapo Tikapo Tikapo Lake I don't know how to say it <laughs> This city was originally settled by the Scots. Of all the beautiful street art and beautiful architecture that we saw, our favourite was this train station, which looked like a set straight out of a Wes Anderson movie. roaming the streets for a few hours and taking pictures of their landmarks and beautiful graffiti that we saw. We were back on the road again, this time heading to a beach where a very strange phenomenon occurs. Perfectly round boulders. Raki Boulders Beach faces east, so it's a perfect location for a sunrise shoot. However, we were here in the middle of the day, so we made the most that we could out of it. to Mount Cook village and we found a lovely view of Mount Cook right there. In a couple of hours we'll be in Lake Tikapo. Tekapo. Tekapo. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get that helicopter ride that we missed out on Franz Joseph uh, Franz Joseph's glacier. Let's hope the weather remains nice. First, tonight we have a lovely, like, stargazing experience. Um, Lake Tecapo is at a super dark area, which means there's gonna be a lot of stars out. So we're gonna do go do this at the observatory, and then once that finishes, we're gonna try to take some pictures of the stars. <laughs>
morning from Lake Tikapo. Yesterday the weather was beautiful, pretty much all day, clear skies. And at night we had booked to do the dark night experience, which would have taken us up to the observatory and we could have seen stars and toured the observatory. But knowing our luck, full, uh, full cloud cover by the time we had to do that. And that was canceled. So we decided to walk to the nearby church that is quite famous. Uh, here uh, on the lake where people usually take pictures of the church and the Milky Way. However, since there was uh, cloud coverage, we just took pictures of the church with some clouds. Right now the weather has cleared again and we've come for that long-awaited helicopter ride. Um, the helicopter just landed from the one before, so I'm guessing we will be doing it this time but you never know. Uh, super excited because we're gonna fly over the glaciers, we're gonna fly over Mount Cook, and hopefully we're gonna land somewhere as well. But yeah, looking forward to taking some pictures from the helicopter. Uh, here's some photography advice for you guys if you're riding on a helicopter. Uh, this is how I like to take pictures from helicopters at least. Um, usually when you're flying, you need a very high shutter speed. So that would mean that you're either gonna have to lower your aperture or increase your ISO to get sharp images and I like to do a bit half and half of those things so I don't want to have too high ISO or I don't want to have too low aperture. So what I will do is I will set my camera to manual mode with auto ISO and I will gauge during the flight. I will probably have my speed to one two thousandth of a second. If the ISO is getting too high, I will lower my aperture. Now there's a benefit to lowering your aperture as well. If your windows on the helicopter are a bit dirty, um, all the dirt will kind of go out of focus. So I'll see how dirty the, the windows are on the, on the helicopter and uh, gauge from that. Another pro tip is to have a polarizer filter on your camera because if there's windows, obviously there's gonna be glare. And a lot of times if you turn that polarizer, it can uh, remove the glare from the windows. So. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be shooting on the 28 to 300 lens, so it has a lot of range. Uh, not the best low light capabilities, but uh, I'm okay with that. Yep, so let's let's go. So a little hiccup with our helicopter ride. Apparently you need minimum four people and it was just the two of us. So We're heading to Mount Cook where there's another branch of the same company with uh, a flight at 2 p.m. that has some people already booked. So we're going to go there and try our luck again. On our way there though, we're gonna check all these views. happening as we started flying and I started taking pictures outside the windows I noticed that there was a weird tinting film on the actual windows that messed up with the circular polarizer so I ended up removing it and I also ended up opening my aperture as wide as possible uh, to mitigate all the dirt that was on the windows, which meant for lower ISOs and much sharper images.
In hindsight, another suggestion I would have for you to minimize reflections on the windows if you can't use your polarizer is to wear dark colored clothing that wouldn't reflect on the windows from the inside. I ended up having to crop my images quite a bit to remove areas where reflection appeared on them. So keep that in mind. That was super nice. Finally, we made it. We made it on the bloody helicopter, but totally worth the wait. Nice uh, wristband. Uh. All right, so it's finally clear outside. There are zero clouds in the sky and we have perfect conditions for some night photography here in Tikapo Lake. So we're gonna head back to the church where we were yesterday and try to shoot the Milky Way. So last night's shoot was a little bit of a bust because the moon was way too bright and right next to the Milky Way. So no bright Milky Way photos, but still very nice night sky. Today we are getting ready to head back to Christchurch. We're going to spend our last day and fly back to Brisbane. So this is what I've seen pretty much the entire trip in New Zealand, everywhere we go. What am I supposed to do? Check out this cloud. One last evening here in New Zealand. We're gonna go explore Christchurch. We walked around town for a bit before we decided we were starving and wanted to eat some nice Indian food. The best Indian food I've had in a long time. You guys weren't aware there were a couple of big earthquakes a few years ago so the town pretty much the entire city got demolished and they are still rebuilding and it, I like I like it I think in 10 years it'll be it'll be a pretty cool town and with that our New Zealand trip ends here and I really hope you enjoyed this little series if you did consider giving me a like and subscribing and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching